What is up everybody? My name is Michael Burpo. I'm a watercolor artist and I stream on Twitch. You're going to be watching me paint light showers. Yeah, I kind of want to get a little bit better at this. I need to practice um, my people and if, if I'm going to start, you know, painting that for real. Um... So I'm going to be painting a model in, uh, it looks like Tokyo. And I think that this is going to be really fun because it's got a lot of detail in it, but also it's kind of a lot of just light detail. So, you know, you can kind of make up a lot of the, the little pieces of it. And it's about firing in these colors and allowing them to kind of bleed on the paper. That's going to give the illusion of, um, of, of depth and also of like rain and, and that kind of reflection. So that's what I'm trying to do is go wash and then color on color. Guys, this isn't turning out great. We're floundering. Give me some blue. Guys, we are floundering. All right. And you know, it's too early for it to be for me to say that it's not turning out great. But what one thing I always laugh about is there really is an an ugly stage for every single watercolor painting it's you got to go in and start layering up these colors and i have to get everything on the paper before uh, i can start saying if it's bad or not but what i'm doing right now is I'm trying to carve out the lights and what that means is uh, you can't paint light onto dark uh, with watercolors, but what you can do is you can add the darks around the, the brights and they will pop out more. So that's kind of what I'm doing is I'm trying to just get the base colors in there. And you notice that I have a much more playful uh, color palette than what the uh, photograph suggests. Uh, the photograph is a little bit more mm, subdued and kind of and looks like, you know, a street scene. And with mine, I decided to go with like a, a very bright wash on the on this left side and also kind of letting the colors, you know, do the work for me. And I think it's just a really fun exercise. Uh, I really love this photo. It's of uh, this model um, and streamer city on. And I think that it's a great photograph. And it kind of you know, represents a lot to me about, you know, this kind of tech and, um, I don't know, cityscape kind of feel. And I'm trying to get better at painting humans and models. And uh, it's something that I feel very uncomfortable with, but I have to practice if I want to get better at it. I really like how she's got dunks on, though. I wish that this painting would turn out well. It'd be really cool. All right. Pepe Silva, Silvia, sorry if you said this, but what is the picture from? Oh man, good question. So this picture is actually of a streamer, a much bigger streamer now. Um, her name is Sidion. Sidion is a fantastic streamer. I think she streams a lot of Valorant, and I really like watching her. She posted this picture, and I think it's a pretty cool picture. Um, it was on Twitter though, so I'm thinking, I'm 99% certain it's okay to be used. It was posted by Roden from Lockerford, and I'm just kind of using it as a reference photo. I don't really want to capture her, but it's mainly just the reference photo. I think I should be okay to show Yeah, I don't really know if uh, it's okay to use photos uh, that people post on Twitter as reference photos. I think it is because it's kind of like they're sharing it, and then I'm doing like a creative interpretation of it. But... I don't know. I think I love this photo, and um, Broden's a great photographer, so I sometimes have used these these photos in the past um, to kind of just have something to draw from. And I think that this is it's a really dynamic pose, and you'll notice that in the photograph she's kind of more standing on her her left leg, and uh, in the my painting it's uh, she's kind of you know, stepping forward, but I kind of like the the way that umbrellas look and also just rainy scenes is kind of pulling my heartstrings a little bit. But again, what I'm trying to do is keep this uh, like a wet on wet feeling. So what I have to do with that is I need to paint this street in first because that's going to have the most reflections. And then after that, it's about feeling comfortable in uh, throwing in the other parts of the, um, of the of the buildings. And the buildings are going to be very strong and very um, kind of mm, stagnant almost. And that's why I have to layer in the lights and like the reflections and the brightness. And then I'll get the more kind of um, stiffer black uh, verticals in there. And you'll see that I'm kind of layering up on top of this really nice uh, color wash that I have. And I think it's part of 
feeling comfortable while painting uh, on stream. And it's something I'm, I'm still working on because you have to kind of entertain the stream as well as be willing to uh, kind of talk about your process. But also you have to stay on, on task and you got to be painting. So it's definitely something I'm... I'm practicing and I'm not quite there yet. So I have a ton of respect for people that have been able to, to kind of nail that skill down. I think it's something that will come with time, but definitely something I'm, uh, I'm practicing at. But one thing you'll notice with this is like, I'm, I'm bouncing around the page a lot because uh, with the wet on wet, I kind of have to use the, the, that technique when it's available to me. But in the meantime, I'm kind of just trying to get um, all these layered values on there with these boxes and it's not about getting everything accurate but it's about kind of setting the stage and you'll see I'm going to work all the way across the uh, painting and I'm always using these uh, vanishing points back to a vanishing point that's kind of like in on her left or the model's right elbow and um, just kind of right right off her shoulder and all my vanishing um, lines that go into the distance need to connect back to that line. Otherwise, they're going to feel weird. And if you look at the reference photo, you'll notice that it's true for her painting, uh, the, her photo as well. They always are washing back into the, uh, into the background. And the second you miss that vanishing point, it's going to feel kind of weird. Because that's just the way that distance and your eyes naturally work, is things will vanish back into a central point. So that's why I spent a long time on my pencil sketch beforehand to make sure that everything was working out because when you start to wing it with paints, that's when you're going to start to get into a little bit of trouble because uh, paints are very permanent and, and pencils, you know, a little bit less so. And now I'm just kind of trying to ground out the, um, the model and make sure that I can get her accurate because her relative values of light and dark are going to be important for what I set the rest of the painting off. Now, how do we get the umbrella in there is the real question. I think that that is just going to be a translucent wash on top. And we'll see if it gets in there all the way. And what I mean by that is the umbrella is a different color and a different kind of value than the rest of the painting because it's translucent. So I'm trying to decide ahead of time if I'm going to paint it in in white or have to leave it without color, um, which will give me the translucent effect as well. I think that's actually pretty good. And one thing I'm trying to feel comfortable and confident in myself with, especially on stream, is being willing to put down the paintbrush and pick up my pencil occasionally. And it's very tempting for me to just kind of, you know, YOLO it and just, you know, create forms using the paintbrush. But when you are willing to put down the, the brush and pick up the pencil and kind of give yourself the more more confidence in uh, creating like for example these uh, architectural signs on the side those allow me to be much more confident in adding in my lights and my darks and feeling like i am um you know not making a mistake it can be very tempting to kind of feel like you're on a roll and just keep painting and painting and painting but uh, you end up kind of at the end, a lot of the times you want to move something over a couple, like a, a half an inch or something, and that's just something you don't get to do with paint, but you can do with uh, with a pencil. So that's why I'm always kind of, uh, you know, bouncing around the paper, is I'm using the street as the grounding point in this painting, because it's the darkest value, and then I'm working upwards from there. And you'll see that I threw in a whole bunch of lights, the lightest values that aren't white, on the, the right hand side. And then I'm adding my darks back on top of it to kind of push the brightness back. And you'll see now I'm going back to the other side of the painting to also push back those brights a little bit so that it feels like um, I want her figure to be very striking because, you know, she is the main model in this painting. I need to kind of have a balance between light and dark, but also focus. So now I'm kind of always working on these vanishing lines and you'll notice it's, uh, it's pretty exhausting working on vanishing points because you can't just make things uh, be parallel. Everything is slightly tapered in and I actually don't really nail it with this uh, kind of awning overhang that, that I'm working on uh, because it's supposed to taper even further in. But, you know, sometimes you make a little bit of a mistake and it kind of gives it like a more flattened feel and that's not the end of the world. 
but it's been really fun working on this painting. Um, I love working on, on humans. I think that's something I'm going to try to do more of. And I like how it kind of tells a story because we identify with humans so much. And if you notice here, I actually uh, changed my shirt, and that's because this is a different day. I came back to this painting um, after a couple days of, of taking a break from it and uh, started a new stream. And that's because you don't have to paint all in one go. Um, this isn't like oil paintings or anything. Um, if your paints just uh, dry out, then you can always just wet them again and paint right on top of them, which is one of the beauties of watercolor and why I kind of really like it. You can always be pushing on and pulling on it. Um, some things will dry, but you can always layer on top. And another part of watercolor I find very interesting is the idea of like kind of these detail levels. So for example, with these signs on the side, you'll notice I'm not painting exactly what the, um, the characters look like. I'm allowing the paint to kind of inform the, the, the viewer that there is writing on here, but it doesn't really matter what the exact uh, writing is. So that's why I'm kind of just letting it be a little bit expressive because if you're standing this far away, you probably can't read what the sign says. So if I render in what the, what the you know, exact character are what the sign says it's going to be um, a little bit disconcerting because you're going to be like well it's so far away why can I read it and it'll kind of start to break the illusion and that's why you can be a little bit impressionistic with some of your paints and now I'm going in and these signs were so fun to paint um, they are kind of a series of different darks and that's why I'm using kind of a lighter uh, dark than I normally would for these uh, these black you know electric signs and I'm layering them in and then I'll go on top of them and allow them to have the shape of the boxes that you'll see in the reference photo but I think it's a lot of fun uh, working on these ones I like how you can start to think about how the shape is and letting it kind of uh the shape tell the story as well because in the end it's you know always going to be a a flat two-dimensional sheet of paper but if we can pick up on these little details that the reference photo gives us it allows us to tell the story and have an illusion a little bit more um, convincingly and that's what I think is so cool about watercolors again is that you can always touch things up and the more you look at your your reference photos and also just notice things in everyday life you can always pick up more detail on how to kind of render things a little bit better and that's one thing I'm working on all the time is just sometimes <laughs> it's, things don't need to be in detail some things if they're farther away you can let them be not detailed it's hard I just, I just, it's like, it's kind of okay. It's just not great. It's just not great. All of my cityscapes kind of feel a little bit let down. <laughs> and again, I'm not one to say that I'm a perfect artist or even a great artist, but some things you feel a little bit more comfortable with. So for example, I feel very comfortable painting nature scenes. And then when I go in and I start painting cityscapes, man, it's really difficult for me. So I'm just kind of, uh, instead of skirting away and kind of only painting things I'm comfortable with, which is very tempting, um, I'm also trying to paint some things that I'm not comfortable with. And for the last 28 years of my life, I've been uh, kind of avoiding painting things that uh, are, you know, difficult for me. So that includes people. So if I instead lean into it and paint only people for a little while, I'm assuming I'm going to get better or hoping at least. And that's this is part of it. Cityscapes are really difficult, really difficult for me. But the only way to get better at them is by painting more of them. So now that's kind of what I'm doing. A little bit of a tan in there. Actually, that's pretty accurate. Nope, that is very inaccurate. That is not the move. So a lot of the times I'm using this term accurate or inaccurate. And the reason behind that term is because I'm painting kind of some type of impressionistic style of this reference photo. And when it comes to impressionism, there's no right or wrong. You know, I'm painting what my feeling of this photo is. And as a result, um, if I, 
there's nothing that is right about the painting or wrong. It's just if it's more accurate to what I'm going for. So when I dropped in that color, that really dark uh, black, it was much too dark and it was inaccurate for what I was trying to uh, tell about the painting. So it's not like it was wrong because I could have gone with that and it just would have been a more striking part of the sign. But for me, I'm trying my best to paint kind of this like, weird you know surrealistic impressionism and you'll notice that my my vanishing points and my lines aren't even accurate for uh what the photo is if you were to line these up next to each other um you would notice that there's kind of a lot of things that are missing or wrong like her in the foreground the model in the foreground is actually very uh small comparatively to uh the actual reference photo but that's okay for me because i think it's uh you know kind of my decision to to tell that and i think that's part of the difference between using uh watercolors and using uh, photography photography you're capturing real life and watercolor I'm trying to at least for myself I'm trying to kind of show something that I think exists but in the way I view it I don't think any of that makes sense but to me I think it's fun to capture kind of the mundaneness of life like this girl is just going out for a walk on uh, in Tokyo you know she's got an umbrella but making it feel you know, extremely incredible, or in reverse, taking something magical and making it feel a little bit mundane. And that's kind of the, the fun of, you know, being able to have a, a, a piece of art, you know, is that I'm showing you kind of my view of it. And what I'm trying to do now is get in a little bit of detail um, near to me. I'm trying to finish up the entire wall because my number one rule about critique is that I can't say if I like or hate a painting until I get everything on the paper. And that includes the sky, that includes all the the different forms, so these walls. I have to get every single piece onto the paper before I can say if I like it or not. Hi, mom. Check this out, guys. So this is my mom. Everybody be nice and say hi. My mom is furiously, I'm sure, trying to explain um, Oma says hi, I'm trying to explain how Twitch works. And maybe Oma, hello. So here's how Twitch works. You're watching me along with three other people, which is really cool, and my mom. Um, my Oma is my grandma for the people in chat. Oma is uh, German for grandma. So the way that streaming works is I am, I have this little program set up on my, on my gadget, on my computer, and I have a camera right here that is also going to uh, show my painting at the same time. And I'm working on this painting at the same time, and you guys get to watch, which is really cool. It's a really novel aspect of being online. And this is what I do for fun. And one thing that's really cool is like, if I was good at this, I could make a bunch of, I could make a bunch of money off of it. Um, but I probably, that's not, in the short term, that's not really my goal. Um, but I also have a reason to stream all the time. I love streaming and I love, I, I just wanted to paint. And now I have an audience and some company. We're here to watch him and he is famous. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, why not? All right, let's, uh, let's paint. You know, I've really enjoyed streaming on Twitch so far. Um, it's been cool having my mom and my grandma watch, um, but also just my friends in general um, because I'm kind of building myself like a, a content pipeline. And for what that is, is I'm going to, I stream on Twitch and I stream my process and I take the recordings and I make these YouTube videos out of them. And then I take a photo of the finished original watercolor painting. I put that on Instagram and then I sell the original or prints of it um, on my Etsy. And it's kind of like this nice little kind of uh, synergy that works together and I'm very pre pleased with it. But the other thing is, is uh, no matter what, I would be painting. And even if I didn't have anybody watching or even if I wasn't streaming on Twitch, I know that I would still be, you know, locked into that seat, still be painting because I do feel like I, I have to get the, the icky out, which is what I call the art. Uh, I have to get it out because if I didn't, I'd feel... 
I don't know, a little bit, a little bit worse about everything. So even if no one is buying my work or even if no one's watching, I'd still be doing it. So I'm kind of just, you know, really pleased and feel really lucky that even if one or two or five or 10 people are watching my painting, it's still way more than if I was to just do it on my own, which is what I was doing before. And there's nothing wrong with that. But now I'm dropping in this sky and I think that once I get the sky in, it really starts to turn the painting around. And I start to feel really confident in it. And it's something I, I have to always remember that as bad as I felt about this painting when I first started it, uh, now it's starting to kind of render out a little bit more and I'm feeling a little bit better about how things kind of fit. But the number one thing I realized about this painting is that it was feeling very busy and very loud in the center. And what I end up doing at the end is adding in a little bit of acrylic white to it. And you'll see that later on in the video. And with the acrylic white, what it's doing is it's just pushing back some of the loudness and allowing the rendering in the, in the foreground to kind of breathe a little bit more. And if that doesn't make any sense, you just have to think about it kind of like photography, where things up close will be more striking and more detailed and more, um, you know, visual. And in the background, they'll kind of have more of like a, like a rough, loose feel. And that's what the, the white will do, because there's no white watercolor, really. And I need to have uh, something that can go on top of other watercolors to, um, you know, push back some of them. And that the only way to do that is with acrylic white sometimes. So that's a, a, like a little trick that you can try out next time. Let's get this white added in. So I'm using a little bit of acrylic color, uh, acrylic paint. And we're going to, this is the only way to add white back into a painting. You have to add it with acrylic. There's no white watercolor, basically. I mean, there is, but none that work. There's white that works as a blending agent, but there's no, like, you can't add white back into a painting without using acrylic. So sometimes people are like, oh, it's cheating to use acrylic. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Because, like... What are the rules? It's not like this is a competition. I'm just trying to paint this, you know, this thing because I feel some creative urge to. And like, if you're to tell me, oh, it's illegal for me to use acrylic on top of a watercolor painting, I'd be like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I think you should play by your own rules. I don't think that there's anything about like the purity or sanctity of, of a, a type of art form. I think you just go in and if that means like, whatever having like these little hacks or something that allow you to you know go and fix your mistakes or whatever and make the painting better absolutely use it it's i get i have no sympathy for people that think that there's like these rules to art um i think it should be absolutely as accessible as possible and you should do it because it's it's really fun go out there and paint who cares about what other people say um, okay, let's look at this painting critically and see what's good and what's bad about it. All right, well, I definitely really like the white I added in. I like how she stands out a lot more. Um, I think that the umbrella is pretty successful in how it's only colored in the center and not on the ridges. I don't super love this wall over here. I think having these self critiques is a really, really effective way of improving your own work, especially if you're not painting in like a formal setting, like a, a classroom. I think it's a good way to, you have to sit down and look critically at your painting if you want to improve it. Um, there's no, no harm in, in just kind of, you know, painting just for the fun of it. And again, there's no right or wrong, but when I'm trying to be more accurate in this painting and kind of have develop my own style, I like to have these little critiques for myself where I look and compare against the reference photo and see what's working and what's not working. And for me, I noticed that this left wall was kind of lacking in uh, detail and it felt way too loosey goosey compared to the right uh, side of the wall. So that's why I went in with the darks and kind of mm, expressed it a little bit more. 
you know, give it a shot next time you're painting. There you go. All right, you know what? I kind of like it. Her face isn't great. I like her shoes. Shoes are good. Feet, legs, all good. Love the shadows more now. I don't, let me uh, add a little bit of dark back onto here if I can. Not really. Um, love the white of that parking sign. I think it's pretty good. Let's stamp it. All right, let's stamp it and we'll peel it and we'll be happy. Stamp it time. All right, here it is. The key is you gotta pick a good spot. I think it's gonna be right here. Unless it's right here. No, it's gonna be right here. And you gotta roll it up and roll it down to the left, to the right. There it is. Good stamp, good stamp. Can we get some claps? Good stamp. Cover up the stamp, that's the number one rule. As soon as you stamp it, you have to cover up your inkwell because you don't ruin your picture with a bad stamp. What you do, you ruin your picture by getting ink on your hand and then smushing your painting or getting it on your sleeve and smushing your painting. Don't be that person. Alrighty. Um, I need to sign it and then we'll be happy and then we'll peel. We'll take this. I just use a little Micron pen. Micron 03. This one is actually in good shape. And I'm gonna sign it. I sign my art with Churney. Shout out to the Churneys in the chat, spelt differently. I'm actually rather pleased with it. Yeah, you know what? I think she turned out pretty good. I like when I push back all the white. You and nothing, thank you for playing. <laughs> I like this white streak right here. I think that this building is the exact right color. I think that that was a very successful wash. Very, very uh, abnormally technical for me. Um, you know what? This painting, not ideal, but it definitely is, it's pretty good. It's not perfect yet. It's not where I want my cityscape skills to be quite yet, but I do think it's uh, definitely better than the last one. If you guys will indulge me, will you give me one second? I'm gonna grab my first painting that was actually from this photo set of what my night paintings were. Here, let me um, let me put this like this. Give me half a second. So this is kind of neat. I actually um, painted a photo from this photo album already, and um, you could see kind of how my photo process has changed. So here's what the first one looked like, and you can see very similar style. What I think is really interesting about it is uh, I use pen ink on this one. Things I like, I think that this bag is pretty successful. Um, I think that this umbrella, not good, but the wiring inside of it, very good. Things I can't stand about this painting, I can't stand this diagonal is so wrong. It's, it should be more like, um, like if you guys can see this, it should be more like uh, like that. And instead in like that, if you look at my top edge. But instead, it's just swoopy and bad. These windows should be more like this. And not good. This girl's mask in the back, very bad. But I really like this guy in the back. You can, I like how the change in, in rendering happens. But if you look, I think you can really see my style has developed. This painting was made, oh look, I stamped it, 8-7-2022. So this one, it's really easy to see, I think, the difference in rendering style. Here, let me, um, 
There we go. You know, I think it's pretty interesting. I think it really shows a development in my style. Um, this one is much more technical, much more loose, much more flowing with the color choices. Um, this one, much more tight, much more controlled, um, perspective, not very good. Still kind of closer. I kind of like her face and her eyes and the swoop of her. I like how like the back of her head just touches into the edge and I use this nice white wash on it. This one is so much better, much more dynamic. Legs feel much more active. That's also the photo, but I like how I went in with the white. I don't super love this swooshy right there, but whatever. Yeah, overall, just a real change in um, just comfort levels. I think that these verticals could be better. Could be more over. I think that the old painting still kind of shows promise, but you notice there's a lot more dulled, a lot more bluey, darky, coldy. And this is a lot more brighty, middle of the day, kind of lovely feeling. This is more like kind of enamored. And this is like a little bit more like out of a dark kind of serioso. And I think it's okay to, to look back and compare your work to your previous self, but you can't stare behind you too long. You have to keep looking forward because, you know, if you, if you look back, you're going to end up back there. And I think it's fun to just kind of compare how I was using light and, and, you know, kind of what my technique was back then. But maybe I'll go back and I'll paint something else from this photo set in, you know, six months, a year, and then see if I uh, continue to develop my style. All right, everybody, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. This painting was actually a ton of fun. A special shout out goes out to Sidion, who's the model, as well as Broden Plett, who's the photographer. I hope you guys don't mind me using your reference photos. Uh, if you do, I'll give you this painting. And uh, I think that this is one of those examples of, you know, sometimes paintings are ugly until the last second, and then you have to just go in and add a little bit of detail, and it really changes the painting around. I hope you enjoyed watching me um, explain my process and maybe I inspired you to try out watercolor. If you do, give me a tag on Instagram and follow me on all my socials. I've got a YouTube, an Instagram, a Twitch, Twitter. Uh, give me a look and I'd love to have you involved. I also have a Discord. I'll leave the link in the description below. And we're always in there kind of sharing each other, uh, our work with each other and trying our best to kind of push ourselves a little bit more to improve. Enjoy and I'll be back with another episode real soon. Cheers.